Hello everyone, how are you? Hello, what happened on the Walk Day Daryl Dixon episode 5? Me and my mother watched it. Blockbuster episode, folks. A lot of awesome shit happened. Here's what happened. Okay, so three things happened. There was flashback. Finally shown what happened to Daryl when he left the Commonwealth to go search for Rick and Michonne. And showed Daryl, Lucia on the boat. And show what happened to Isabella when she stayed behind in Paris. So, quickly, let's talk about the flashbacks. Actually, it's not, because that's the huge part of the show. I'll keep that suspense for last. Um, Daryl is on the boat with Lucien. They left Paris. They got away on scene by the rebel soldier guards. But there's a third guy on the boat. So I was like, was he on the boat when they left last week? Or did they pick him up along the way, right? And he's an older fella, and um, he keeps has his pocket watch, right? And he doesn't check the time with it. He just keeps taking it out of his pocket, looking at it, putting it back in his pocket. And Daryl knows that. Anyways, they're traveling on a boat, and they decide to dock on shore in this wooded area to camp for the night. And the old guy said, this place is safe. No soldiers come here. And Daryl said, well, we're out of Paris, so why would there be rebel soldiers out here? He said, they patrol this area, too. See, Daryl and them didn't know that, right? So they camp at this burned-out house. Like, the only thing left standing in this burned-out house is just, like, the front of the house. <laughs> and there's no doorway, but Daryl just, like, walks in, like, yeah, cool house. Like it. So they're talking over a campfire, and um, they're talking, and Daryl finally asks this, the old guy's like, what's up with the pocket watch, right? And the old guy says, it's for my loved one. We got separated during the Walker Republics when it first happened in Paris. He said, we never crossed paths again. I, she may still be alive. I don't know, he said. But I've been searching for years for her. And then Daryl says, well, I got family too back home. And he starts naming off like Carol, um, the lady that's deaf. I forget her name. I apologize. Um, Eugene, Negan, Maggie, Judith, Ezekiel, he even mentions Jerry. That's cool. And the Lucian says, you'll be seeing them soon enough, Daryl. And Daryl says, what do you mean by that? And then Lucian had a vision that Daryl gets back to the Commonwealth, meets everybody. So that's a good sign. And um, so they're camping, and the old guy says, I'll take first watch. And they set up tin cans, like on a string. As a kind of like a security system. So walkers, if somebody sneaks up on them and triggers them, they know something's up. Well, was Daryl and Lucia are sleeping, Daryl wakens up and there's a walker coming at the entrance of the house. Daryl is kind of shocked that this walker got by the old guy. So Daryl takes him out with a knife attack. And he's walking through the clearing and he finds more dead walker bodies. And he finds the old guy. And he's stuck, like, by a tree, right? And Daryl goes up to him. He says, something's stuck in my back. And Daryl walks in, like, a piece of branch. And then pout him right across in the back. Um, Daryl says, why didn't you come get me? And the old guy's like, I used to be a great fighter against walkers. But apparently, I'm not so good anymore. He said, and I didn't want to concern you guys. I thought I could handle the four that showed up, but. There was a fifth one, he said, and that got me. And his, his face, side of his face was all burned. Because the last one he killed, because minus the one that got away, that was the fifth one. The fourth one, I guess, he killed was an acid walker. And the acid sprew across his face and it showed, like, the burns. So he died. And uh, so Daryl Lucien went to leave on the boat. And the boat's gone. And Daryl is freaking out, right? And then he notices that the rope that they tied the boat to a tree has been cut. Lucien cut the boat free, folks, because he wants to go back to Paris to save Isabella and his father Gwen and the other survivors. Guys, he said, those rebel soldiers are going to kill everybody in Paris with those new advanced walkers. They don't care about people's safety, stuff like that. I want to go back and save them. Daryl gets mad at what he did, and then Daryl realizes, you know what? You're right. So they'll go head back to save everybody. So as they're heading back to go save people, they're on a road, a jeep pulls up, six rebel soldiers get out, and they get captured. That's all shows of that. 
Then it goes to Isabella. Instead of her helping Bullock, the old guy with his crew, the group that was staying in that storage warehouse uh, that got attacked by the rebel soldiers, and some of them got killed in that, and he attacked the nightclub last episode to get back at Gwen because he ratted out where it was. They decided not to attack the port to get away yet because it's been reinforced. Gwen has Isabel held captive at his place. He has guards on 24-7. He has his old maid helping him. And she says, how did you get so powerful in Paris? And he said, when shit hit the fan, you, you don't do nothing or you seize the moment. He seized the moment. Um, he has her captive. She can't leave. She's tried. He has a captive. She can't leave. She refuses to eat. Stuff like that. And then, um, one night, she seduces Gwen. She starts making out with him, stuff like that. And she's trying to play along. And Gwen knows something's up, right? So he ain't a fool. So he pulls her off of him. And then the next day, the maid walks in with a tray. And Isabel says, it's pointless. I'm not going to eat. And then May leaves. But she says, there's something else besides food on the plate. And she laughed. And Isabel was kind of confused. She opened up the tray and there was a note from a mystery person saying they're going to come rescue her. So she gets right excited, right? Rescue's on the way. It's probably Burlick, the old guy. Or somebody. Um, then Gwen walks in and says, we've been invited from the Stephanie and Gannett, the leaders of the rebel soldiers. He said, they want all the survivors that's left alive in Paris to come to their place. And Isabel said, why? And Glenn says, we don't know. It's a, it's a, they're ordering people to be there. If you don't, they're going to take you by four, stuff like that. So Isabel goes with Glenn to see what's up. They get to the, um, as they're going, that bartender lady, right? You kind of find out she's had a relationship with Glenn. She shows up at his place and finds out that he's right there with Isabella and she said you son of a bitch and Gwen's like it's not what you think then you find out the night before when they she was seducing him she has showed up to talk to him and she heard them behind the closed doors so she stormed out and she said I'll get you back and Gwen looked at Isabella and says nothing to worry about <clears throat> they show up at the rebel soldier's place Burlick's there, the old guy of his crew, the other none of that. But they're sneak you can tell they're kind of sneaking around looking for like ambush spot stuff. I think it's gonna be attack from their crew to get back at the rebel soldiers. Because he eyed Isabella, but Isabella looked at but Gwen never saw him, right? So Isabella turns Gwen's attention away from seeing him. And they meet up with the rebel soldiers. And they take Gwen and Isabella and they close the door behind the other survivors and they take them down these catacombs. People are getting beaten up, tortured. Apparently, these are soldiers that disobeyed um, Gannett and Stephanie's orders, so they're being punished. And they walked up to this cage, and Daryl and Lucien are in the cage. They fall Gwen in the cage and pull Lucien <coughs> out. And they take her and Isabel and lock her in a different cage, somewhere else. And then Gwen's like, why the hell am I being locked up, right? And then that bartender shows up. And she locks and says, I told I'll get you back. She told Rebel, um, Stephanie and Gannett that Lucien is his son. And that, so now they got leverage for Gwen, right? That sneaky bartender. Wow, that was a move. I Oh, that was a shocker. And then it shows... The rebel leader said, explaining what's going on. She said, Glenn and Stephanie said, we're taking over Paris. We're done helping you, keeping you guys safe. We're done with the ambush attack, stuff like that. People trying to escape. This is our regime. And if you're either with us or you're going to be killed off, plain and simple. So the other survivors start clapping because they don't want to get killed right off, right? And it shows Burlick and his crew up in the platforms. You can tell something's up with them. And she said, and to show you, we mean business. And they point down, and Daryl gets thrown out amongst everyone, and he's tossed a battle axe. He picks it up, and this friggin' big-ass walker comes 
out of the other room, chained up. And they eject him with something. The walker is like veins and his face start getting all bubbly. And like veins are popping out. It's like, I don't know if this thing's on freaking like drugs or something. It's jacked up like on Venom from Bane and Batman or something. Anyways, it busts through the chains and it runs right at Daryl. That's what ends right there. So that's another cliffhanger ending. Now the flashbacks. The huge thing. And it shows Daryl on his motorbike traveling through streets. He's in Maine. Um, he stops, and he meets a stranger in a car. And the stranger says, how's it going? Daryl says, I'm out looking for people. And he says, you're from around here. And Daryl says, no, I'm actually... I'm sorry, I got kind of like a dry throat going on here. He says, no, I'm out looking for people. He says, but he doesn't tell the stranger where he's from, right? The stranger says, well... Tell you what, follow me, we'll cook you up with some gas. Daryl follows him to a truck stop. And there's these bunch of these truck drivers. They abandoned to Jeddah to stay alive. They got the place fortified, right? And I said, this place looks familiar. And I wasn't placing yet until the guy introduced Daryl to the rest of the truck drivers said there's three rules. No stealing, no killing, and no fighting. If any of you, anybody breaks those three rules, you're banished. And that is from the Walking Dead Telltale's latest game. I knew it sounded familiar. It's the exact same place that is in the game. The guy, the same leader, the same name. And last time, I'm like, I knew this place seemed familiar. Then as soon as he said the three rules, it clicked to me. So that's cool how they took that place from the video game and put it on the show. That's awesome. Easter egg there. Um, so Daryl stayed at the truck stop, that he's talking to people, and there's this young guy, and he's trying to find someone to help him go out and look for his sister, because they got separated. But the other truck drivers refused to help, right? And Daryl refused to help at first, because Daryl said, I'm just here to get fuel and be on my way. Then Daryl notices that they start herding walkers, and he's our truck driver. And they got him alive. And Daryl's like, what the hell's going on? And then they started loading him into 18 wheels. And they take off. Daryl's like, what's going on here? And the leader of the truck stop, they don't say his name. If they do, they just say it once. I apologize. Didn't catch his name. Um, if you look up the Walking Dead Telltale game, the newest one, that would be the guy's name would be on there. Um, he says that they're in contact with people to gather fresh walkers to ship them. To a port in Maine. And then they're just shipped away. And he says in return we get ammo. We get food. We get rations. To keep us alive. So Daryl stays there for a few weeks. Helping out gathering walkers. He shows up watches these two old truck drivers right. And they constantly try to get into fights and arguments with people. And they got like maybe three or four walkers. Daryl comes up by himself. He's got like a chain of like a dozen of them right. And the old guy's like oh yeah show off. So Daryl's staying there. He's there long enough that he's allowed to news the radio. And he contacts and gets confirmation at Commonwealth from Carol. And just the emotional look on Daryl's face, knowing he could talk to somebody. He knows. Carol says, where are you? Daryl says, I'm in Maine. I've had no luck, no Rick, no Michonne. He says, I'm heading back home. Um, and this gets staticky, right? And she says, I think it's quiet here. Then she says... Someone came back. And Daryl says, what? What you say? She said, someone came back. And Daryl said, who? And she says a name, but it cuts off. So that was a shocker. Like, who came back to the Commonwealth? Was it Rick? Was it Michonne? Was it Maggie and Negan from New York? With maybe Michonne and Rick until... Was it Heath? There's people saying it might be Heath from Season 7. Because remember, he got he went missing... Took off the IV tower where him and Tara got attacked with those walkers on the bridge. And you find out that the director said at the end of the episode when they had questions and answers from the cast. They say Heath was a was approached by one of the CRM helicopter pilots and taken to a location. Maybe Heath finally found them to say, hey, Rick's alive. He's being held there hostage, right? Maybe it's Morgan. It's Morgan on the field of the walk dead. If you haven't noticed, seen it yet, folks. Sorry, this is a spoiler. He's left. He's gone back to Alexandria, right? To find out what's happened. But the last time he was on the walk dead, Rick was still alive, see? So he don't know Rick is 
suppose was supposedly dead or not. He doesn't know Alexandria is burnt to a crisp. The hilltop was burnt down, rebuilt. He doesn't know about the Commonwealth. He doesn't know what's became of everyone else. So that's why he left Fear the Walker Dead halfway through season eight to go back to Alexandria. So maybe more guests of the guys showed up, right? We don't know. That's a lot of guesses who it could be. Let me know below who you think it is that's returned to the Commonwealth that Carol was excited about. Is it Rick? Is it Michelle? Is it Maggie? And Maggie, so in Negan. Is it Heath? Is it Morgan? Is it someone we don't even know about that has information about Rick and Michelle? Um, let me know below in the comment section who you think it is she's referring to. I think it may be Morgan. Or it could be Michonne coming back. And then that would lead up to the Rick Michonne storyline in Walk Dead, Daryl Dixon Season 2. Anyways, back to the flashback story that I got a little bit off top. Because I got right excited for what that information needs to egg there. Daryl decides to, to fill a few up and head back out to get his ass back to the Commonwealth. As he goes to leave, it shows those two old truck drivers, right? They're coming up without a supply of fresh walkers. And that young guy that was asking for help is a, one of them. He's a walker. Daryl stops his bike and says, what the hell happened? Oh, we found him out there. And Daryl looks like he's a rope burn. Rope burn around his neck. He says, you sons of guys hung him. And the old truck driver said, what if we did, right? Because he was pissing us off, asking for help. So Daryl and them get into a fight, which leads to them getting banished, right? Because the free rules were no stealing, no fight, and no killing. So Daryl and the two truck drivers get banished. But the banishment is you don't get kicked out of the truck stop. You get loaded into the 18 wheels of the walkers, and you get shipped to that port. That was a shocker. Daryl and the truck drivers get out of the 18 wheel. They're tied up. And they load onto the cargo ship. The same ship that Daryl in the end of <clears throat> the beginning of the first episode jumped off of. It shows that in the ship's captain. And it shows them get loaded up. And there's like shipper containers full of walkers with different names written. And Daryl don't understand the language. I think they're names of places that they're being shipped to, right? These new and then it shows walkers. Show one walker a test tube sticking out of his neck. And that was stuck and pumped into it. It showed Otto Walker tied up, getting electrified. Um, then it, they're shoved into a shipping container of human survivors. And then the ship leaves port. <coughs> As the ship's leaving port, Daryl and the other two truck drivers, right? They notice that once in a while they open up the shipping container, pull somebody out. And they feed them to walkers to keep the walkers alive and fresh. Because they, where they're going, they want fresh walkers. So, Daryl, it's down to Daryl and the old truck driver. They're the only two left in the container. Daryl pretends he's sick. The two guards take him next to feed to the walkers. Daryl escapes, takes out the soldiers, throws one of them into a pit of walkers. That guy gets eaten alive, tore into. He kills the other guy. He frees the old guy. And they go to escape, and they get on a boat. And they drop it in the water. They go to escape. Soldiers are after them. People on the ship. The ship's captain yelling at him to get shit under control. Daryl, while he was running around, freed up all of these shipper containers. And all these walkers are on the ship now killing people, right? Causing destruction. Explosions are happening. And the old guy goes to leave with Daryl. And that walker that was getting electrified got free and went after him. And the old guy's like, this is a big sucker coming at us. <laughs> I laughed my head off when he said that. He kills the old guy, unfortunately, the old truck driver. Daryl hits it like twice with a fire extinguisher. Doesn't even face it. So Daryl jumps overboard into the water onto that boat. And the ship, and there's a big explosion from the chaos. And that's how the episode ends. That was an awesome flashback, folks, showing you what happened to Daryl. Leading up from his exit from the Commonwealth. Ended up in Maine. How he got on the cargo ship. Why the captain's mad at him. Because he was on these walkers. And stuff. And caused a mutiny there. With the other um, crew members. Stuff like that. Um, next week's the season one finale. Two and a half hours long. Um, the producers said it's going to be action packed. And it's going to end with a huge. Huge shocker. And the kind of all he leaked with the shocker is. Is that Matt Carroll. Is coming on to season two. 
There wasn't supposed to be a season two, but the very first episode did so great. It got renewed for a second season. Um, that And she was supposed to be on this journey with Daryl, but she didn't want to relocate to Paris like Norman Reedus did. Now Melissa McBride feels bad for doing it. She wants to make it up to the fans. So I think you're going to see her show up to rescue Daryl. Or maybe we're finally find out from Lucien who that person was to train the nuns, right? Because that's still being talked about, who this person was to train the nuns, how to fight like that. Maybe it was Morgan on his journey, because the timeline for Fear of the Walking Dead is completely different than The Walking Dead. Like, they're the years ahead of The Walking Dead, right? Stuff like that. So maybe it was Morgan that trained the nuns. Maybe it was Rick. Maybe it was Michonne. They're still talking about that. So that's got to be tied into the season one finale somehow. So there you have it, folks. If you have not seen this episode yet, must see from start to finish. Great episode. If you have seen it, let me know what you thought of it. Stay safe, everybody. Too sweet. Bye.